we want to display our categorical variables in tables and graphs. Let me show you how to create these descriptive statistics using JASP. For this example, we are going to be using the dog toys data set that I've been using extensively in this series. If you're unfamiliar with this data set, you can find it on the first tab of the Describing Data Week 3 Excel spreadsheet that I created for the course. That is available in the course and in the link in the description for this video. Let me show you what these data look like. 50 dogs were asked a series of questions like how many toys do you own and what is your favorite toy, giving us nominal level data, scale level data, ordinal data in the form of dog size, small, medium, or large, and more nominal data like the breed of the dog and which toy they chose as a reward or a thank you for completing the survey. The days to fail, fail is how long it took to chew up the chosen toy, and that is also a scale variable. And finally, the favorite toy is a collapsing of favorite toy into three categories. In order to use this data set, however, we need to get it out of Excel and into JASP. JASP will not open an Excel file, but it will open a CSV, and so that is how we're going to save our data set. To make that happen, we are going to go to Save As under the File menu, and we will save it to the desktop as a CSV file. It will probably be listed, it will be listed as an Excel workbook. You just change that to comma delimited, CSV, save it to the desktop, and click Save. You're going to get a notification that the workbook can't be saved. It's not as bad as it sounds. All, all it's saying is that there are multiple sheets, and it will by default look only at the first sheet. And that's exactly what we want, so click OK. Well, now the data have been saved to a data set on the desktop, which we can see if we move this Excel sheet out of the way, there it is. So really all we need to do is to open up JASP. When JASP opens, we can import this CSV data set by going to the main menu. I'm going to hover over Open, Computer, click on Desktop. There's my CSV. Click once and open. There is the data set. I'm going to rearrange the desktop a little bit here to give myself more room and we can see more of what is going on. Here are all of the variables that we looked at previously. There is one thing that we could change at this point. Dog is actually a nominal variable because it's a naming variable. These don't really go in an order or quantify anything. They're simply giving us a unique identifier for each dog. Uh, 1 through 50. Toys owned and days to fail are both scale. The favorite, dog breed, dog size, and toy chosen are all nominal text variable. So you can see the A in the blue ball in the uh, indicator as it's a nominal level. Uh, favorite toy 3 is also a nominal text variable. To create descriptive statistics in JASP, it will be no surprise, we're going to go to the Descriptives tab. All of the variables in the data set are in this window, and we are going to analyze them by moving them into the variables box. The variable that we used previously was called favorite toy, or favorite in this data set. That's the variable that we're going to move into the variables box, and we will immediately see output in the form of the progressive disclosure that characterizes JASP. I'm going to click on favorite. And I could drag if I wanted to, or I could click on this arrow in between and move it into the variables box. I get a basic descriptive statistics box. At this point, I can leave it as it is, or maybe in some situations I might want to transpose that to make it more horizontal or take up less vertical space. I'll just leave it like that for now. Now, of course, the way that we're going to display our categorical data in a table is to use a frequency table. 
and that is going to be found in the frequency table options. So I'm going to spin open or twirl open the tables, and one of the first options I'll see here is frequency tables. Click on that, there is my frequency table. It contains the simple frequency, which is the count. Percent frequency and valid percent are exactly the same because there are no missing data points. If we had missing data points, percent would include the missing data, creating missing as its own category, and valid percent would consider only the cases with no missing data. Then we have the cumulative percent, accumulating from 16 to 100, which doesn't really make sense for this type of data. It's nominal, so chew toy plus chirpy bird doesn't actually work in a mathematical sense. Now, one of the great things about JASP is it's almost impossible to mess things up. So, for instance, if you were to choose settings that don't apply to nominal text data, nothing would happen and uh, no harm, no foul. Let me show you just a few examples. If I click on stem and leaf tables, which require continuous data, you notice nothing happens. So I'll unclick that. Among the statistics, there's really nothing that runs here either, uh, not even the mode. In fact, all I get is a note that says not available for text variables and a place where the mode would go if I had continuous variables. Uh, quartiles or skewness are going to give me exactly the same type of output. Uh, nothing happens because this type of analysis or statistic would require something like continuous variables or scale variables, not the categorical variables that we're dealing with. So we'll twirl close statistics and I'm going to go to basic plots. One of the first plots that I showed you was the box plot. showed you how to do that in Excel. To create a box plot, I simply click on Distribution Plots, and there is the plot. Now, you'll notice that the names of the variables are kind of packed together. That's easy enough to fix. I'm just going to drag this out a little bit, resize, maybe even make it a little taller, and it automatically redraws. It gives me a nice-looking distribution plot. There are other things like correlation plots that don't work, so if I click on it, nothing happens. Displaying density, that would be another continuous variable. But again, feel free to explore with these examples and see what you do get. Uh, or I could use the Pareto plot. There it is right there. I'm going to also increase the size of that plot so I can see all of the options. Oh, I should do that on this one as well. Not that I need to, I just like to see all of them. So here is my Pareto chart with this increasing line here for uh, the number of accumulated points. Again, nothing we need for this level of data. Um, or I could, if I really wanted to or didn't know better, I could create a pie chart that can also be resized, making it larger, smaller, so forth. Uh, I've already told you that pie charts, or really all charts in AP style, are grayscale. This chart, obviously, is not grayscale. How could I fix that? For that, I'm going to go to not the basic plots, but the customizable plots. Spin that open. The color palette right now is colorblind, so it contains colors that someone who is colorblind could still see. I'm going to change to gray. And that grayscale, this is nice because I have my first uh, category. Uh, as darkest, and then it becomes increasingly, or maybe decreasingly dark, it becomes lighter, progressively lighter as we go around in uh, clockwise fashion. Uh, we also see that the biggest chunk is the uh, first category, with increasingly, or maybe decreasingly, smaller categories as we move around. At least I think that's right. I, I think this category is, is it larger or smaller than this category? Well. That's the problem with pie charts. It makes it really difficult to tell the relative sizes, which is why I would recommend your Pareto option or just a simple bar chart if you're going to display categorical data. Now, before I end, there is one other important thing that I want to show you. You see, this dog toys data set is one that we're going to use well, throughout this course. And it would be nice if we're going to learn how to use the Dog Toys data set in JASP to have a JASP version of this data set. 
So let me show you how to save this data set in a way that will make it easier to open next time. I'm going to go to the main menu and I'm going to click on Save As or hover over Save As, Computer and Desktop. Now I'm going to click. I'm not going to save it as describing data, but rather as dog toys. Save it to the desktop, save. Now that will save all of the output that I've created for descriptive statistics, but more importantly, if I close JASP, I have a copy of the data in a JASP format, which means that later on, if I'm doing some other analysis, uh, I'm doing a correlation, for example, I can simply double click on that JASP file. JASP will open and I can see the data set as I imported it along with any of the output that I've already created. And that is how you can create descriptive statistics, both tables and graphs, for your categorical data using JASP.